I booked the flight for Monday. I think it's in the morning. I'm gonna let you, I think it's in the morning, so I should get there. I'll let you know. But um, my mentor is down there too, so I let him know. So he might. I mean, I let him know, yo. If I need, um, he might. If he, uh, if I might need him to pick me up, he already is aware. Okay. So if I end up getting there. Yeah, <laughs> let me finish this vlog <laughs> right. or start this vlog. All right, bye. Yeah. Oh man, I ain't even gonna cap and act like some of those other vlogs, like. This was fully planned out, but the main reason why I wanted to come here, put it like this, I'm not going cap and act like I come here all the time, but I do come like definitely like twice a year. And when I be door dashing during the day, whenever I end up over here, but it's uh, right now we have my cousin grave site. This is self just being a certain pivotal point for me because after he had died was I want to say maybe a couple weeks later. It was a couple weeks after his funeral. That's when I had my certain suicide attempt. Mm -hmm. So he was, it was like the whipped cream on, on top of the Sunday when it came to bad shit that was happening at the time. And like I said, you know, that certain thing happened for me, but yeah, he, uh, he died at 20, he was 22, I think 22, 21. And one of the biggest lessons I would say I got from him was take advantage of the opportunities when you got it. I I last seen him at a restaurant, and I wanted us to take a picture, but for whatever reason, I get rattled when I when it comes to asking people and say like, "Yo, let's flick it up." So I just never got the picture taken, and then he ended up dying like a month or two later. So that uh that was a difficult. I'm sorry, not a month or two later, a year or two later. So that was a difficult situation for me and we um he actually died happily or at least it, i guess happily as you could put it from natural causes so it wasn't nothing no foul play so that's at least a positive he uh he died doing what he loved he was hooping at the y he went to go get water they say he never came back from what i was told the cameras itself said he just collapsed had like a seizure and from what I was told, he's pronounced dead at the scene. So I got a call a Friday night from my girl, like, yo, did you hear the news? Claude died. So I go right on the gram, right to Facebook, seeing all the RIP stuff. I called my man CJ and he let me know, yeah, bro, he really gone. So that was a difficult time for me. We, um, we actually met my freshman year of high school. We met, we got connected from, shout out to my, my big sis, Latanya. We met through her on Xbox, ended up becoming a whole group of me, CJ, Claude, Tyree, and Freak Bull. And our whole summer was 2K and the Y. So, was a super happy, super fun person. Like I said, it was a pivotal point for me, so I wanted to be able to put this in the vlog itself. Like I said, the main lesson and takeaway, I'll take advantage of the opportunities while you have them. I'm happy we got to play against each other. <laughs> my, yeah, my sophomore year, we got to play play against each other. So I'm super grateful for that. But um, yeah, man, just wanted to, I'm grateful to be able to have this team. Oh, you know what? Wait, is this still going? Mm-hmm. Bro, I even got to, um, just even this aspect. So I even dedicate this to him in terms of him being born July 27th, and I don't know if it fully shows it in there or not, but I actually had a, uh, we have a red heart game that we used to do. We had a red heart game that we used to do at my college, and on that game, I wore the red sneakers. I ain't gonna lie, I don't like defacing my stuff. So, I just took tape and wrote like his death day on there, and I wrote his name on the tape, because I didn't want to write on the sneaker itself. But I had 27 that game. I looked at it after the game and had cried that night, just knowing like his birthday being, July 27th so that was like a dedication I was able to give to him so that's my uh the certain memorial 
aspect of that. Does the car look bad, nice? I got it washed. But it could rain the day that I got it washed. <laughs> No, for real, you used to like come out here a lot. <laughs> nah. So you never like fucked back there in that hidden spot? <laughs> nah, I don't know about no hidden spot <laughs> back there. It was a good time back yeah. there, but oh uh, <laughs> shit. All right, so where we at right now, this is, um, for those that's not in like South Jersey, we actually right across from Philly pretty much. That's technically Bristol, but it's like right over. Good, how are you? I'm doing well. Yeah, that's just mad ironic, because my college was called Brevard College. And then my mother went to Virginia. We talked about Virginia at the gym one time. Oh, shit, we yeah. definitely over out the <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm a good one. I was in my love where I'm at. Like, I enjoy meeting people. But, yeah, right across the bridge, that's pretty much Philly right over there. I head over there to hold on. Put a ring before I let the wind kind of go by. So, hey, yo, shit. Why y'all do this? Why y'all see a man being happy and start doing shit that y'all want to do shit like that? All right, let me stop being crazy. Yo, I'm not misogynistic because I know people want to see this and start getting mad. But, um, yeah, right across the bridge is Philly, but I always like to come out here. It's the Delaware River for those that don't know, and I just be chilling. I'll just come sit between the trees and meditate. And then, for me, one of the, uh, I say one of the main things about this spot is whether I'm happy or sad is somewhere for me to be able to come to. Like, honestly, I spent mad nights out here where I might have been sitting in my car and cried just because how the day was going or what was happening. I had plenty of times where even on the opposite end, I'm just super happy. I come out here and go live, have a nice little lunch, nice little picnic. So I really love this spot. And then with this episode itself being called Allegory, which is really talking about my story of depression, it's just, this is a spot that it brings me a lot of happiness, a lot of joy for all the spiritual women out there. I was born March 11th, 1996, and I'm a Pisces, so y'all can go ahead and run all my shit. So, yes, that's why I like coming by the water, so y'all don't got to try to do all the work to figure that out. But this is one of those places that I like coming to. Like I talked about in my, uh, my spiritual elevation. Just ways that you can raise your vibrations, make yourself feel better. Don't worry. Don't worry, Bryce. I got it pulled up already so we don't have to rush through it and you start yelling at me. <laughs> but just in ways to be able to raise your vibrations. Smiling, body cleanliness, clean and organize your room, sleep, meditate, do yoga, have sex, exercise, go for a nature walk, sit in nature, go ground and recharge yourself. So be outside barefoot, drinking water, being around water, having fruits and vegetables, spending time with positive influences, having positive conversations, spending time with animals, your pets, doing detoxes, whether that's food and water, uh, a dry fast, whatever kind of detox and fast that you may do. Treat yourself. We always got to be able to treat ourselves. We all deserve things in life anyway. So we don't take enough time to do that and doing it without having a certain guilt. Breathe, give, listening to 432 Hertz music, listening to your favorite song, dancing, watching TV shows, except in the day. I ain't gonna hold you, I'm not gonna read no more. Y'all can go download it. But this is just one of those spots for me where, hold on, let me, let me even show y'all so y'all know what it looks like on the website. There you go. Y'all can all go download that, but this is one of those spots for me where I'm able to just come out, debrief, chill, really just recollect on the day itself, recollect on what I need to do. This gives me such a clear space so I'm able to do the things I need to do. So I love coming out here. Yeah, fun. And I be catching the sunset. This should be beautiful, yo. I'm trying to think, all right, what's next? If y'all haven't noticed yet, we're hitting certain landmarks or certain points that go into the track itself. Oh, you know what? We can head to the crib. I got a... Uh, my animator. I did say that in the last vlog. I do have an animated video that's going to be done. So I'm about to hop on a Zoom call and I'm about to see what that looks like. So I got to find a tough ass transition. I promise y'all, one day I'm going to get mics and one day I'm going to have a great transition. Like, I promise y'all, and my chair in the cramp, I'm going to get fixed one day. So I'm going to let y'all know now, especially for those that have been on my live. So I promise y'all that coming. All right, it's cold as shit. I'm ready, bro. <laughs> Bring your ass! <laughs> it's cold! <laughs>
Yeah, cause we we got four cameras we can be using. I'm telling y'all right now. Wait, <laughs> wait, Bryce, show those too. When he first came up, cause I had stuff like already set up, looking at different angles. That shit almost looked like when you try to cut your own hair. <laughs> I feel like that's what that's like as a photographer. It's like you felt, uh, <laughs> like you felt trying to cut my own hair. Nah, <laughs> yo, nah, <laughs> nah. But um, yeah, we got four cameras to use because I got the D three hundred, the yeah. D eighty is downstairs. I mean, for like a big, like a big sit down, like if you wanted like three other people in here, like to talk, or just anywhere to talk, right. that'd be tough. Yeah. Nah, not yet. Um, that'd be dope. But you could have a, a camera on everybody's face and then like one for a wide angle. That'd be mad. That's why we need those mics too. I was looking at them too. Would it, would it even make sense to just go ahead and grab a boom? Because I looked at that and was just considering. Oh, a boom mic? Yeah, and just like if I could find a bass or something. I'm sure some of them have a bass or something that yeah. you just sit up. But yeah, I mean, that that would work too. Um, I just don't. I never did the separate audio and video thing. Uh, I never did that before, so that I was trying to avoid that the best I, that I could I for myself. What you're talking about. Yeah, that would be. Yeah. So just yeah, I didn't think about that. Camera. Yeah, maybe just get like a regular what's name mic. Like, well, that shit. However you do it. However you do. I didn't think about that. Yeah, I just never used that before. So I wasn't sure how I wanted to do that one. So what's the general idea behind the animation so people can get a little glimpse of what I'm doing it for my counseling video. Okay. So is it already going? Oh, where? Yeah, the animation I'm going to use for my video counseling. So I'm going to talk more on that when we get there. But yeah, the anima yeah I'm going to just leave it at that. The animation is being used for my video counseling. I'm just in my head thinking of like all the other stuff that I'm gonna be doing. All right, bet. Let me see here. Let me just make this quick so I can get right back to this. All right, um, you want to zoom down? You sending me the joint or? Yeah, I can send it to you. I'm gonna just make you the host. All right, no doubt. All right, bet. I'm sending it now. Bye. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So. Wait, do you share the record with me again? Let me see. So now, uh, just to show you the style of <clears throat> what we're rocking with. I'll be hitting you up with the uh, next will be, like I said, with your full rig so you see what it looks like. And then right after that, it's just, it's just you know, syncing up the lip sync. And since I've got the magical, magical program, you know what I'm saying? That's not going to take too long. So, okay. about to have this, have this thing knocked out before you know it. All right. Appreciate you, Sherrod. Let me no, get back sir. to uh, this vlog and working. Full oh, shit. Right back at you. All right. I'll talk to you later. All right, man. Bye. All right. So, that's the animation part. Yo, I'm telling you, this is really going to be, it's really going to be crazy. You've never seen an owl book. And then an album with animation. I wish y'all. I really wish y'all could see Bryce's face. I'm telling y'all. I'm going to get. I'm gonna get a GoPro so that they can be facing Bryce. Oh, uh, that might be my motivation for getting a GoPro now. Just so we can face Bryce, so y'all can be seeing him behind the camera. <laughs> so y'all can see and hear more of him. But all right, bet we got everything. Um, shit, yeah, that's everything. I'm good. So. First of all, let me even start with this. How I'm breaking the whole album down, everything is working in like two pieces. Everything is two parts. So the first two have to deal with the traumas. The second two is the adolescent state. The next two is the mental aspect moving forward with that. And then the next two are moving forward or realizing and understanding yourself. And what I really like and how I broke the project down, so between the first 
one through four and a half. About four and a half, the fifth track is basketball. And from the first one up to halfway through the basketball one, I actually am sharing like my adolescent state and my experiences as a child and when I was younger. At the midway point of the basketball track, I start talking more on my adult life. And then from there, the rest of it is talking about my experiences and what I kind of learned and where I'm at now. So that's what I really like with it. With, um, I still don't know if I'm going to call it depression or allegory yet. Because I really like that word allegory. And for those that don't know, it pretty much just means a story. So I think I am going to call it allegory. I think that sounds better with it. I mean, y'all let me know. Uh, y'all could definitely let me know. But um, something that was also real fun with this track. So I actually started recording this project before COVID hit. Again, shout out to, I don't know what name he goes by. If he goes by, I'm going to just say Goat because I know that's one of his main names. But we started recording in March. For the, no, March when I released the Community Talk. We started recording in April. And then because of COVID, everything I put on hold. So when we came back to record again, I recorded the rest of the tracks and just finished out. After I finished out. Because we didn't have those tracks anymore, he had deleted them. I had to re-record the first four tracks. So how that ended up even working in my favor with the one that we do in the allegory, depression, whatever it's going to be called, with this one. And now allow me to not only share the story, but I was able to add parts in there where it was like foreshadowing. Because I got the track validation in there. I got the track purpose. And I got the track estrangement. So because I ended up doing those after, it gave me that idea like, all right, we're now when I go back and do this or now doing this again, oh, I could foreshadow that. And I can even emphasize that and say, yeah, I had to really learn what my purpose was. I found myself seeking and looking for validation. I found myself being in these areas of estrangement. So that was mad cool. In terms of how the track itself is set up, I start off with me being eight years old. Now, I remember being in the car, I told my mother, I feel happy on the outside, but inside I feel angry. And then because she just kind of brushed it off, I'm like, all right, I mean, I guess it's no big deal. And then as many of us know, in just the black community in general, it was taboo to really talk about that or express that. So for me, I say suppressing that and not really knowing what was happening, why I would feel this anger, it turned to me just doing dumb shit, just being mad, arrogant in school. Wanting to fail classes just because I felt like I had to be a jock and just want to fit this certain image. From there, as I got older, it turned into more of a sadness and a guilt. Because it didn't make sense to me just in life itself. And like I say all the time with my story and certain experiences I had, it's such an anomaly because I'm born and raised in pretty much this beautiful, amazing, diverse suburb. So by no means, there's no gang affiliation is no no drug ties to this or nothing that somebody may think so for me to have the experiences that I had and that I share in this track it didn't make sense to me and I knew again being somebody that I mean I grew up in a like I said a beautiful diverse suburb two-parent home my brother my dog until my brother ended up uh the cop I remember the cops coming to the crib and taking him out so until like that happened and him going to jail and just certain things happening, you know, I pretty much lived that fairy tale life in this sense. Like I had a silver spoon life, I admit that. So for me to have started having our this great life and then to feel a guilt about it, like how J. Cole put it, I feel ashamed because the good Lord and brought all this success to me and all I seem to focus on is all the stress on me. So that was a lyric that just always stuck with me because I just didn't know why I would feel what I was feeling, then just going through life itself, man, the whole experience of, put it like this, the story itself in which y'all which are going to listen to and hear, if you've never read my testimony or listened to some of my interviews, this all pretty much happened in like a six-week span, I'm sorry, six-month span, all these things were happening from grievances to dealing with this mental aspect, losing this person, that person, I'm trying to think, well, I already said the grievance aspect, but yeah, it was just, um, it's a lot running through my head when I think back to it. It was a lot of things happening at the one time. Not not playing ball no more. Dealing with transferring schools. Hell, I getting hit by a car. So literally having to relearn how to shoot. It was a lot of things that I really had to learn 
how to handle and how to deal with. And within these first two tracks, the pain and then this one, I give you the whole synopsis and in a sense a summary of the story itself. So I'm very, very excited to see how that hits people. Honestly, I told the engineer, yo, my goal for that is for people to cry. <laughs> I want people to hear those first two tracks and I want them to I want it to hit them in a sense that they really do cry because they're really able to feel it. So as y'all already know, how we end in these vlogs, well, if you don't, since we only on the second one, but how we're going to be consistently ending these vlogs, at least that are specifically kind of set up like this, where it's talking about the background of the track itself. Y'all about to get the 15 second snippet. All the regular YouTube shit, you already know, go subscribe. Everything is in the description itself. And shit, stay tuned for next episode. I first realized I had depression when I was about eight years old. And I remember being in the car and my mom driving. I tell her, yo, outside I felt happy, but on the inside I felt angry, like I felt fire inside of me. And she just brushed it off. 